when you have one of the generals of the Demon Lord call Wannabe Kirito, a.k.a. Schwartz, a background character, and how there is no way that character could be the hero. I'm dead, man. I, I honestly am. There is so much comedy gold in this episode, all the way back to episode one, that has never bored me. I mean, the reveal of Tachibana to Schwartz, just the idea that, like, I have something to tell you, and how dead he is afterwards, it completely left me speechless. I really didn't think they were going to casually reveal it right there, as they also maybe casually revealed how to actually use the stat menu, and how I'm not sure if it was actually Kirito here who unleashed a devil portal, or if maybe it was the demon lord himself. Either way, the fact that who seemingly is being built up as the hero, I mean, it's literally even in his goddamn stat menu, says hero, the fact that his skills are so underwhelming in comparison to Jingoji, as you also have someone who doesn't even know what he is, he's actually doing half the time. I love how if they actually are going to commit to a background character, a side character being the hero of the story, as R2 are just easily wiping the floor with Demon Lord generals and probably the Demon Lord himself, that is absolutely hilarious and such a refreshing take on the kind of like, hero isekai formula because that's what i love about this show is that everything it's making fun of is things i legit enjoy when they're taken seriously if you can't laugh at the shit that you enjoy and have it be made fun of poked fun i mean you're just too serious for your own good you're not gonna have that enjoyable of a life you gotta you gotta take the laughs and you gotta take the lump so to speak and to have arguably what is normally like you know episode five episode six of an isekai a big general right of the Demon Lord comes into town, they're trying to kick some ass, take some names. And the fact that while defeating this creature who strips people down, eats their clothing, as they also just want to consume magical weapons for powers, the fact that Jingoji was able to dodge every single attack while arguing with Tachibana what his fetish actually is. First it's bunny girls, then it's made, and he's like, you think that would be enough to get me going? as he so casually drops some of the most like, oh my god, you just killed so many anime viewers watching this, when they're talking about virgin tropes, where like, they, like these are some of like virgins' most wildest dreams, like, oh, my shirt's all wet, so I need to wear yours, the boyfriend shirt, and I'm like, I'm dead watching these scenes. And this is what I was hoping to see, because I think it was either last video or the video before, I was talking about how if they ever do fight the Demon Lord, I doubt it's going to be taken serious. Like, Jingoji could probably one-shot anyone in this world. But the fact that it's the entire fight, the fight was there. They built it up as serious as any isekai fantasy show out there. But Jingoji wasn't even facing the opponent for most of it. He was facing and arguing with Tachibana about how he has way more refined taste than Tachibana does. Because why would you want someone to call you Master or Mister when they just first met you? It makes no damn sense. And I'm like, my boy has no chill and I'm absolutely living for it. But I think one of the funnier jokes for me that I don't think was supposed to be as funny as it ended up being was with this like girl who I thought was a girl to begin with. And I had some people last week say, no, actually, I think it's going to be a guy and that she just looks like a girl. And I was like, actually, that kind of makes a lot of sense given the kind of like the gender swapping and everything that they've been doing up to this point. And then you have Tachi Bonnet being like, wait, mister, you're a girl and then just feels really bad about the whole thing. I just love the misunderstandings and how nothing is being taken overly serious. Like, this show wants to be a slapstick comedy, but when you do strip down the comedy and look at what the characters are doing and what they're offering, I love how even though you have a Kirito parody, Schwartz is an interesting character as he stands. He's just like the generic high school character who got transported to a world, wants to be a hero, constantly gets his shit pushed in because he doesn't know exactly what he's doing, but he's an entertaining character. I know a lot of people were like, oh, they should have got Kirito's voice actor for him, but I think he, the casting is perfect. I think it would have been a little too on the nose if they would have got Kirito's voice actor, so I think having it be what we're seeing here, it just makes him a lot more normal, and I think, you know, he you don't want to punch him in the face. As much as he is Dollar Store Kirito, I'm going to take Dollar Store Kirito every day of the week over the real thing, because this man just, he entertains me greatly, and he, sometimes I just legit feel bad for the guy. And the fact that we can have, like, literally who's supposed to be one of the more powerful people in this world cry in a jail cell after basically getting annihilated by someone who wasn't even trying to lift a finger. 
absolutely fantastic. This show, honestly, and I'm not going to commit to this just yet, but with how I felt over the past five episodes watching Total Fancy Knockout, if this level of comedy and dedication to the story remains all the way to episode 12, I might have a new favorite comedy anime. Not even joking, because this just lands with me. I love the gender-bent romance, will they, won't they. There's a legit romance building there, and I absolutely love it, and I hope they get together. Whether Tachibana goes back to being a male or stays in the female body, I don't care. Those two belong together. They're absolutely fantastic. But the comedy and the way it breaks apart all the tropes that I personally love. There's a couple of tropes over the past five episodes that maybe like they're making fun of things that I don't enjoy about anime, but when you combine the vast majority of the jokes and the poking fun, it's shit I enjoy, shit I cover on this channel, and stuff that I would defend, but it's so fun to see it be made fun of and stripped down in this way, and I hope it never changes. The voice actors are remaining fantastic, the comedy is fantastic, the art design is still as Looney Tunes as it needs to be, that moment where you have these two just like sitting in the background and their character designs are so wonky and they're just being distorted from the energy blast taking place in the fight. I absolutely love just everything about this and how you can go from like fighting a general to then stringing her up like she's a hog. She spits on you and then you just zap her and who knows what else happened behind those closed doors. Absolutely baffling comedy but I wouldn't have it any other way. I know a lot of people raised an eyebrow or two when I did my first impressions on episode one being like, this makes no damn sense, why are you liking it? But I can't tell you, there has been dozens and dozens of comments from about episode three, probably now to episode five. Definitely three and four though, there was quite a few being like, you know what, I didn't understand why the hell you were covering this, but I'm so glad I gave it a chance because as dumb as it sounds, it is entertaining as shit and absolutely it is. There's a legit story being told, there's characterization being explored, but even the dumbest things in these episodes, I honestly find are more well-written than a lot of shows trying to be super serious as of late. I just, I love this show. I really hope it's not going to be a one-season wonder where we only get 12 episodes and a production committee, like, forgets. I think the studio they picked is perfect. I think they represent these personalities, the Looney Tunes level absurdity to the more serious kind of Jingo G getting pissed off. Everything about this production, this is a Brandon production. There's certain shows that just scream Brandon, and this is definitely one of them for me. I really hope this one gets a physical release, because I want to own this one. I really, really do. I think this will be one of those shows that I constantly go back to alongside Konosuba, just when I need a good anime laugh, because everything about this show represents the ridiculous comedy that I look for in anime. And so many times, you don't get stuff like this. You get a lot more cliched style comedy not kind of breaking down trope comedy, and this is this shit's my jam. Thoughts and feelings, do you have a favorite comedy moment? What do you hope to see maybe now with uh, wannabe Kirito Schwartz over here actually now discovering his skills and half of them he doesn't even recognize as he casually hides his true name? Like, what can his name be that his dumbass name that he's saying is his name is better than his actual name? I don't know, but I'm excited to see that sometime in the future, but thoughts and feelings down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. Till next time, everyone, take care and have a good one.